So it's a trout opener and uh, I've had a number of people ask about my setup. A um, bunch of new anglers going out, first time center pinning, uh, want to set up a certain way, uh, want to make sure they're doing it right. Well, there's no right and wrong way to do it. You're going to have a float, you're going to have some split shot, and you're going to have a hook at the end. And there's more optimal ways to do your setup, um, but you, there's no wrong way to do it, especially if you're fishing slow water like we are here east of Toronto. Um, you don't need a lot of tapered shot on your line. You're just going to want to have a float. This is just surgical tubing. And you'll see that I've got two of them below and one of them above. The reason for that, it's possible when you're fighting a fish or just your wear over time that one of the tubes will, will end up splitting. And if one of them comes off and you're left with only one, then you have to take everything off below the float and retie. So there's an extra one on there just in case if one of them breaks, you're able to move one of these up to the top and you're still fishing without having to retie. So most people that you see that are using these type of floats are going to have three pieces of tubing. So they have one extra. Um, I actually put two uh, bobber stops above it. That just prevents that float from moving at all and helps me to position. Um, I always put two because if one of them comes off, breaks through line, uh, I still have one there. And also because I run acorn floats, these are actually my favorite. But I ran out recently when I was on the water, so I rigged to that. Um, the Cool Waters Acorn Floats, one of my favorites because they have a brass lining and that brass lining helps the float to last a very long time. Um, it's a slightly different setup because you need a bead right below that bobber, bobber stop so that the bobber stop doesn't get stuck in the float. You're going to run a bead there. Other than that, it's basically the same setup without the surgical tubing. You're using the bobber stops to prevent the, the float from moving up and down. Below my float, I run a lined um, weight. This weight has a polymer lining in it, and that prevents any kind of chafing on the line. And instead of using a bunch of split shot that you're pressing onto the line and potentially creating some weakness in the line as a pinch point, um, having this type of float that you can position with a bobber stop so right now it'll slide down. I've got a bobber stop below. So I move it up right underneath the float. And what I'm doing with this weight, this inline weight, is I'm matching it to the rating of the float. So if I'm running a five gram float, I'm running a three, three and a half or four gram weight. Just enough to bring it down leaving a little bit of extra play. So if this is in the water, the water level will be there. And then if I put a little bit of split or I'm running a glass bead, then that'll sink the float a little bit more right to that line. So in this case, I'm actually running a four gram weight under a five gram float. Then there's the bobber stops that I can position that on my line. And below that, I've got a couple of split right above the swivel. And that's just to get it to the perfect gram weighting. Then I've got a micro swivel, and from the micro swivel down, I run zero shot. And the reason for doing that is I'm running a glass bead, uh, Creek Candy, and the glass bead has um, some weight to it. It's not buoyancy neutral, uh, and it will drop right down into the strike zone. And if I'm running row, it's gonna bring that row bag right down at the front of the pool, you're able to get to the bottom. It's not gonna, your row's not gonna drift mid column and then finally get to the bottom of the pool, mid pool. It's actually gonna just drop straight down. Uh, just gonna tie up some bags right now and I can show you the different color combinations because the water is actually quite clear and good right now. 
Um, the first color I'm tying up is white. Um, I'm running brown trout row, which is like crack to the steelhead, uh, especially in the river that uh, I'm fishing, because there are brown trout in there. Uh, brown trout row seems to be the ticket. And it has a little bit of a lighter color. Um, I like the natural presentation, so I go with white, peach, and yellow. Now, not to confuse the yellow with chartreuse, the chartreuse is a lot brighter and I'd run that in dirtier water conditions along with pink. I don't actually run a lot of pink row for trout, I run the pink more for salmon. Uh, but I'm going to tie up a few bags because you never know what's working. So I'll tie up a little bit of pink, a little bit of chartreuse, but majorly it's going to be white and peach with a little bit of yellow. I will also tie up a few, not a lot, but a few uh, with some floating foam. And the reason for that, if I decide I'm going to walk the creek and I find some beautiful areas where fish are holding but not spawning uh, in shallower water, quite often your lead is tied up for the pool so you've got quite a deep lead and with a micro swivel you can't move your float down past that. So if I'm fishing in water that's shallower than my lead, let's say I have three and a half feet of lead and I want to fish water that's like three feet or two feet deep, right behind a rock there's some fish holding, um, I will change the row and I'll go with a row bag that actually has a couple of foam balls in it. And what the foam balls do is they'll lift it up off the bottom and it'll flow a lot easier. Um, so you're not dragging bottom and getting hung up. Um, I find that it's a really good way of adjusting your depth in the column and being versatile on the water. Uh, as to how I carry the row, for years and years and years, I've just been using normal pill bottles and I stuff them inside my bag. But as the years go by and you have more and more and more and more stuff that you're trying to stuff into your bag, I finally broke down today and went to Gannon's, uh, Gannon Sports in Oshawa, and they've got the row bro. And I've got a bunch of buddies that have this. Uh, it's great to have they also have the paracord on there so uh, as far as a safety issue it's nice to have um, some paracord as a safety tool in case you needed some rope <laughs> i've never had to use one but it's good to have it so uh the rope rope they're a little bit bigger which is nice because you got to really jam a lot of row into those pill bottles and it hangs off of uh my bag which is just a lot more convenient to not have the row stuffed in my bag So with the natural presentation, when I'm doing white and peach, the sizing is going to be a little bit smaller. People say, how many eggs do you put in? It's not really about how many eggs because every species of fish producing roe, the roe that you're using is going to be a different size. So it's a lot more brown trout roe than it would be salmon roe. So you can't really go by the numbers. For those of you that haven't tied row before, I'm okay at it. Um, I'm not the best at it. Uh, I go around four or five times and then pull it tight without snapping it. Four or five times, pull it tight without snapping it. Four or five times and then pull it. So some people say that's overkill. I like it that way. This little box, um, I 
think I bought it at Gannon's. You can definitely buy it online. So that's the size with the weight. And I'd say it's almost nickel size, maybe slightly smaller than a nickel. And then in comparison, when I'm using the pink or the chartreuse, I'm going up in size. And that's, you know, for dirtier water conditions, uh, faster water conditions, make it more visible. It's a slightly larger size. Most people say the size row should be dime, nickel, quarter. Um, I don't think I ever tie anything bigger than that unless I'm doing salmon. Um, but for trout, that's about as big as I'll go. And then same thing with the chartreuse. So with the chartreuse, it's about the same size as the pink. Now I may tie with the brown trout row some chartreuse that are smaller, um, but definitely with the pink, I almost always tie a, a larger bag. So hopefully that gives a few answers to a few people. I don't know if anybody that hand ties row bags using thread locally has done any videos but please if you do have a video tag it in the thread just so that the people that watch my stuff can see how true pros tie row I find it easy, I find it convenient, I find it clean. Uh, it might not be as fast as some other people's methods, but I just gotta clean up this little area. It's not much mess by the time I'm done. Anyways, that's that. We'll see you on the river.